showtime! The Capital G Show starts right now. What's up, YouTube? Capital G here. So, guys, Umar Hack played Dragoonity at YCS Toronto, and he made it all the way to top eight. And I think that that's pretty special, considering Dragoonity is a deck that it's always felt like it's on the verge of being a real contender. It just feels like you know some of the OP decks have kind of been holding it down. You know, now I do feel like the main win condition of the of the deck of you know you want to get Stardust on board ASAP. I feel like that really hasn't changed. Because Stardust is what protects your bread and butter, that being Dragon Ravine. And if you can put a Stardust on board, protect it with a Lance, a Bottomless, a Warning, or an Evac, you should be pretty set. And, you know, from there on out, you just kind of make like a Crimson Blader or you make more just big ass uh, uh, level 8 synchros. And you just kind of slowly win the game, overwhelm your, overwhelm your opponent with Scrap Dragons and shit like that. <clears throat> the thing about Dragoonity as a deck is. It seems like it keeps getting indirect support, whether that's, you know, it getting Zephyros, which means that you can use uh, Dragon Ravine twice in one turn, or even when the deck got, you know, um, Heretic King of Tomb, and it was like, okay, well, we make sixes very easily, so now we can pull Red Eyes from the deck and OTK, and then it got, you know, Tempest from Lord of the Tachyon Galaxy, and it was like, all right, well, now we can actually make some use out of those dead Legionnaires and those dead Duxes in the graveyard and not bank everything on hopefully drawing a Pot of Avarice or something like that. So I feel like Dragoonity is a deck where... It like it slowly has just kept getting indirect support and eventually something had to give. Now, this deck was fully playable last format. The problem was obviously spellbook and you know just straight dragon rulers were like way too OP, but I felt like it was kind of a matter of time to where Dragoonities kind of saw their day in the light. Alright, so let's go into the deck. He's got three Legionnaire, three Phalanx, and three Ducks. Obviously, the main cards in his deck are Ducks and Phalanx. Dropping level weights every turn is good, I hear. He has uh, three of the armor. He has one Aklis. He plays um, one Leviathan. Red Eyes. He has Zephyros, two Tempest, and two Effect Veiler. He's got three Ravine, three Terraforming, three MSTs, th uh, two copies of Forbidden Lance, uh, Sarko, Dark Hole, and uh, Book of Moon. And then for the traps, um, I'm not going to lie. It's just all over the place. It's like he took every single trap he could think of and was like, I'm just going to run one copy of that. He's got Bottomless, Torrential, Solemn Warning, Evac, one Royal Decree, one Breakthrough Skill, and one Mind Drain. I don't really know what the heck was going on with the traps. Uh, Alright, so obviously Tempest is a card that, again, it lets you further extend your plays. You know, there may be, like, one occasion where you can actually normal summon an Effect Veiler and make, like, uh, a, another level weight out of that. But for the most part, it seems like a good card to pitch with um, Dragon's Ravine and search out one of the other cards, Phalanx or Ducks, that you actually need. I find it interesting that he didn't run cards of consonants because, you know, I guess he was just banking on he was always going to be able to get to Ravine when he wants to. And I guess, you know, cards of consonants is a card that, if you don't draw it early, you're always going to pitch it for Ravine. And, I mean, it can be a little inconsistent. A lot of the Dragon Ruler builds right now are running the card. But, you know, that might only be a trend. Um, now, for his trap lineup, which, again, was all over the place, I actually think that Royal Decree was a pretty good pick because it's really, really good against Black Wings. The only problem with that is... You know, um, it's a little more difficult to protect the Stardust if you only have to rely on, you know, a Fat Veiler, Book of Moon, or Forbidden Lance. You're kind of pushing your luck there. I think it was smart for him to max out on MSTs and then to run Double Lance because you need that damn Ducks to go off. I mean, if you can't get Ducks off, you're not going to win with this deck. And if your opponent happens to a Fat Veiler, it, you can always just summon the armor and just keep going off on your opponents, knowing that if you've got Ravine on the field next turn, you're going to get another Ducks anyway. So, you know, I'm not really sure about the breakthrough skill. He was already running double Veiler, but I guess he figured he could pitch it for, you know, he could pitch it for Ravine. And then if he was playing against Mermil and they had something like Abyss Gaios, he could just remove it later. You know, um, I actually think that Mind Drain was really smart because it locks down those Maxis, which Maxi is like, Maxi cripples this deck for sure because when you summon Ducks and you have Phalanx, you have to do like 5 billion special summons before you get to a level 8 Synchro. So I, I think that it would have been kind of smart to maybe run two copies of Mind Drain instead of the Breakthrough Skill or run two copies of Decree 
you know, where you can just like, okay, your opponent tries to do something, they try and torrential you or something, and you're just like, no. <clears throat> it was uh, interesting to see that he ran the gold sarcophagus, uh, if for nothing else, but just for the Tempest. I mean, in which it makes sense because the Tempest can search him a bunch of different cards in his deck, not just searching another Tempest, but you can get other guys. And, uh, you know, I think that Dragoonity right now, it's a really solid deck. I would have liked to seen Fiendish Chain in the deck. Um, I say that because, you know, he has Zephyros the Elite. Not only does Fiendish Chain stop one of your opponent's big summon monsters, you know, stop a Debris Dragon, it stops a little Blue Boy, but then you can just bounce it to your hand, summon the Zephyros the Elite, and, you know, possibly exceed for, like, a ranked... Uh, a rank four or more more likely you're going to use it with phalanx and ducks and make a whole bunch of just derpy ass plays there but i would have liked to see maybe a couple of fiendish chains just because it works so well with zephyros and zephyros is a card that if i'm not mistaken you can pull straight from the deck with a. Uh, with um Gaydurg. so i don't really know why he didn't play that over something like um breakthrough skill once again not to mention it stops attack so again i think that this deck is going to be good i think as far as these spells and traps and maybe the monsters the blueprints here his trap lineup needs to be tuned up for sure because i don't really know what's going on with one royal decree one breakthrough skill one mind drain no fiendish chains i don't know what's going on there but you know, at least we now know that Dragoonity is a very solid deck. My only fear is, you know, can can the deck handle Maxi? I don't think Maxi's going anywhere, and I think Maxi is a card that people are going to start playing three of for Mermail, Dragoonity, and and the Dragon Plant deck. So my my question is, can can this deck effectively handle Maxi? And maybe Ma maybe Mind Drain in the main deck is the answer. So let me know what you guys think. Thank you for watching as always, and take care. Subscribing makes life happy